Assalamu alaikum guys, this is the Arabic, oh wait, one minute. It's just about this way, isn't it? Let's put it back, put it this way. Assalamu alaikum guys, this is the Arabic teacher Sam, welcome back to another little video. Today, um, we're not going to cover much content, just a little vlog. Uh, I'm visiting my students in Kent today. Um, two, of my, two of my students in Kent, so big shout out to Iram and Hamza. Um, doing very, very well, mashallah. Uh, Iram has completed my book one, so she's going to get a little certificate today, uh, which is quite nice. Um, I'll put some pictures of them up on Instagram, so you guys think of them as well. Hit up the Instagram, Arabic Sam Instagram, to have a look. So, um, you know, as I'm in the car at the moment, like, I think some of you guys n knew that this week it'll be quiet on content because I'm visiting students and stuff, and up here in London, I don't really have recording space other than, you know... Which I'm allowed to make videos in now. My wife said I'm allowed to make videos because I had it I had it cleaned yesterday. Uh, went to a place in East London that I usually go to. Got it cleaned. So, uh, good stuff. So, what I wanted to do in this video, after that little rant at the beginning, um, was talk to you something that I've been really pleased with, actually, and, and some advice to the parents out there. I think it's really good and really useful to do some advice for parents because, you know, it's becoming increasingly common that people want their children to learn Arabic in the Muslim world, and that's that, that's awesome. And um, that's a really, really, really beautiful step in the right direction. And people are often employing Arabic tutors like myself. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to give some advice, really, on what to expect from your Arabic teacher. And to give you a bit more understanding about the field. Because most of you who will be employing an Arabic tutor don't speak Arabic yourselves. Or else you would probably teach the Arabic. So, something I'd be really happy with, you know, is that, like, m my parents have a really, really good understanding that Arabic, learning Arabic isn't like other languages. And in that, I mean that Arabic is an enormous field. Like, Arabic is spoken across so many different countries, in so many different dialects, and is pretty much the same language since it has been 2,000 years ago. So, that there aren't a lot of languages that can say that. You know, like, the, you know, when, when you're learning French or whatever, like, it's... If, you, if you're learning French, then you're probably learning it for a specific purpose and a specific type of French and stuff. Like, and if you learn one, it's pretty applicable across the board. If you want to go on holiday, if you want to use it for business or whatever, like you can still go through the same steps just to start off with a basic conversation. But a lot of the people who want to learn Arabic, that'd be completely irrelevant for them. Like for me to teach them how to have a conversation with an Arab, it it wouldn't that that would be completely like irrelevant for a student who who wanted to learn how to read the Quran, for example. Learning, you know, like learning some like learning, for example, like. Lehge Nasraya, if you want to learn like Egyptian dialect or something, you learn how to say, you know, Izayek. And a is or you know a is a and stuff like this in, in Egyptian in Egyptian dialect that'd be completely useless for you to learn the Quran. So the advice to parents really is firstly be be clear and transparent with what you want from your Arabic teacher because I get people who just lump in all kind of Islamic studies into Arabic. But they seem to think that an Arabic teacher is also gonna come round and do Tejweed and Hivz. Well, they also think that an Arabic teacher is going to come around and do Islamic history or something, or or is going to like you know teach fiqh or teach aqidah. It's just like an all-round Imam Saab or um, yeah, yeah. I just think it's an all-round Islamic studies teacher is going to come around and and deal with the, the Islam part for your kids. But that's just not true. That, that's and that's not what I do. So parents should be aware of that. Like, but I teach Arabic language. I teach al lughat al Arabiya. I teach the Arabic language, and I don't. I don't really specialise in teaching the Qur'an. So, you know, so firstly, like, from the parents, be transparent about what you want from your Arabic teacher and ask them about what their understanding of it is too, because I know there are people in the industry who do promote themselves as an Arabic teacher, but actually what they are is a reading the Qur'an teacher. Yeah, but that's that's not... You know, like, like most of the students who I teach in Cornwall who live near me, like, they call their teacher, who teaches them Qur'an, their Arabic teacher, but he doesn't know any Arabic. Like... Yeah, he's like a, a Bang like Bangladeshi community mostly in Cornwall, and their Mir Saab, like he comes around, he doesn't speak any Arabic, and they still call him their Arabic teacher because he teaches them to read the Quran and stuff. And then I wanted to finish with just letting you know there is kind of a solution, little plug for for my books and for my course, that um, like the, so the way that I put together my my curriculum is that I took purely vocabulary from the Quran, and then in the books I use that vocabulary in like everyday context. So so you come to have like a more well-rounded appreciation for the vocabulary that's in the Qur'an. And then when you come to open the Qur'an, students, some of my students from a very young age, you know, seven or eight, come to read, you know, most sort of from, from just Amma, from just Tabarak, and can go through the lines and can point out the words that they know, and they know that word from other contexts, they have a more well-rounded understanding of their vocabulary. So, so that's what I do, really. I use, like, you know, MSA, or Modern Standard Arabic, grammar and context and stuff. 
but with Quranic vocabulary. And that works for, like, you know, a good 80-90% of vocabulary in the Quran, but... But, you know, for a limitation, I think, of my curriculum, and I'm completely transparent about this, is that there are words in the Qur'an that aren't used in MSA. Like, that there are terms and expressions in the Qur'an that that aren't, like, common, <laughs> commonly used expressions in Arabic newspapers and stuff. So, perhaps, like, my course needs, like, a supplement or something, like a, you know, like a, a purely Qur'anic vocab book or something, something that I could think about putting together, or I have been for a little while. You know, it'd be nice for me to have my my four books. I have my, you know, I have my four books, my Arabic with Sam, book one, book two, book three, book four, Fundamentals of Arabic. Um, that, that, that's the main curriculum that I teach most of my students. And, um, but I think it needs to be supplemented with, a, with like, a purely Quranic vocab book. But, um, so, so that's it, really. Like the, 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 main, the main topics of, of, of this video that I wanted to talk to you guys about was that, you know, have clear expectations with your, with, with your Arabic teacher, you know, try to get a bit of an understanding of what they actually expect from you. And also, like, I'd like to raise a bit of awareness among parents that Arabic teachers can't be expected to know all of that most of the time. Like, if there was an individual who, who knew, who could teach Arabic, like the complete Arabic language, like they spoke Arabic, they could speak Fosha, they could speak modern standard Arabic, they could, you know, and they, and they understood the meanings of the Qur'an, and they could read a Qur'an with perfect tajweed, and they could teach all that, and they knew Islamic history and stuff. Now, they'd be employed and be on good money working for Bayina, or they'd be like, uh, they'd be like shuyukh and stuff. Like they, they wouldn't be coming to your house and teaching your kids for five pounds an hour. <laughs> so, you know, so... You know, to, like, explain that to your friends and stuff as well, inshallah, because I often have to sit down with parents and have, like, an initial, like, consulting session, I suppose, and, 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 and talk about how, you know, like, Ara like, an Arabic teacher doesn't just do everything because he's an Arabic teacher, so... So that's it. Lastly, um, thank you all very much for keeping on um, carrying on engaging with the videos and stuff. Like, I really, really appreciate that. Um, obviously, I'm not creating that much content this week, so so um, not not been in touch so much. But I'm really, really grateful that you guys are still watching the videos, still mm, still sharing my stuff, subscribing to the channel. You know, we're hitting up 250 subscribers now, like this early on in the channel, which is really cool. Um, so, guys, means the world to me. Keep it up. Um, you know, keep on sending in ideas or any questions that you have or any ideas generally just about my social media game and how I can reach out more and, 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 and help more people and stuff through the YouTube community, inshallah. And, um, and if you haven't yet, check out my website as well, ArabicWithSam.com. That's pretty new. Um, you know, we're working on that too recently. So signing off with, um, you know, shukran lakum. Th thank you, all of you. Uh, I'm very, very grateful for all of your hard work. And, um, and that's it. Um, so signing off for the day in Kent. I'll catch up with you guys soon, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.